Green Muscatine. Happy Monday. Hope your weekend went as well as ours did. Uh, a little bit of rain, not enough. I don't know, like there was a point where we were driving home and there was rain on Hauser. It was pouring on us by the time we got to our house just outside the bypass. Bone dry, like our house didn't get anything. So hopefully you got some of the rain, um, but man, we could definitely use some more. Um, we've got a busy week this week coming up, especially leading into the 4th of July next week. So uh, you've got musky baseball tonight. We've got softball, I believe it's Thursday night. Um, we also have Dr. Saga's um, dementia prevention series, which will be Wednesday night out at the Muskegon School District building. Of course, we'll be broadcasting that live as well. And uh, we have a unique show for you guys today. We have uh, three guests, two of which are longtime Muscatine legends that you will absolutely recognize. They'll put a smile on your face and have done so much for this community over their careers. Um, so I, I know I feel lucky to have them both here and also um, to have had them in the Muscatine community for their, you know, let's call it adult lives. Um, so the first one I have with me is Mr. Taco Tom Hendricks. How are you, sir? Good morning, Chris. I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, look at that story. I know exactly what you're thinking. I know, and what, we won't go into that. We've had that <laughs> conversation before. We won't go into that. Um, so if you could, just real quick, uh, for those that may not recognize you, could you kind of give them a little bit of what your history in Muscatine is, you know, where they might have known you from? Um, well, the name Taco Tom, I don't think I'll ever get rid of that because that's what I did for most of my life. When I moved here in 1982, I opened up a second location for Taco John's and ran Taco John's for 35, 36 years and was fortunate enough to be in a great community like Muscatine and tried to do as much as I could for the kids here in Muscatine and make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And uh, that's when I decided to make a bigger step into that and created a charity called Muscatine Charities. And in 1999, uh, several of us got together and put this together. We are a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. And through the years, through since 1999, which that first year we gave seven local charities $17,500, which I thought was just astronomical. Mm -hmm. Well, through the next 24 years, we have raised and given away uh, almost uh, going on $5 million. Which is nuts. Well, it, it, it's, in a good way, it, it's beyond my comprehension. And I feel so fortunate to be a part of this community. Uh, also in 2001, we started a preschool scholarship fund mm -hmm. and we have put over, well over 2,400 children in preschool on partial and full scholarships. So I'm glad that the state of Iowa has taken over that and now really stepped up. But back in 2001, we it, did. Yep. So I thought, good for us. We hung our hat on that for a lot of years, and mm -hmm. now the state has taken over. So these kids, they need to be educated early in life. Yeah. And um, we're, we're glad that we we're a part of that. Well, I'll say this. So, you know, talking about those years when you came here, uh, the things that I, one of the things I remember as a kid, so... I was born in 79, so I was a kid in the mid, late 80s and 90s. Um, I remember the taco dollars, right, that we would get. Taco bucks, yes. Taco bucks, yep. yeah. Yep. I remember those, and I would have never thought that, you know, 25, 30 years later, I'd be sitting here with you talking about where that all ended up leading. You know, like, I was a kid that got taco bucks for baseball like I don't even remember where all right. like but it, you got taco bucks for just about everything you did like it was it was a thing right and um you know from that age it was taco bucks and it was pizza huts book it like those were the two right. things that you cared about as a kid yeah. so I mean I know personally I know you've been affecting because I think we got them like maybe I don't know if it was grades like I don't even remember but it was yep, it was always did. tied to doing something positive right and uh, 
So, so thank you for all the tacos back in the day. <laughs> you are so welcome. <laughs> it was always handy because it was right down by the ballpark and, yeah. you know. Um, so let's talk about the golf tournament, how it actually started, because this is actually a really cool story, I think. Um, it's another great example of how Muscatine always finds a way to solve problems and even ones that you didn't even really know you had, right? Right. So like, how did it all sort of come together? Well, back in uh, probably 97, 98, <clears throat> I was approached a couple times and a couple other businessmen here in town were approached to be a whole sponsor in somebody's golf tournament. Mm -hmm. That was, they were a fundraiser. So if we did that, you would spend a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars or whatever for a whole sponsorship. And then they would want you to play in the event. So you're going to spend another a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollars to play in the event. And then you have to take the day off. So you've got to have somebody cover your hours. And then you go and you buy raffle tickets and 50-50 tickets and whatever else they have going on to help support the, the charity that's putting it on. Well, there were seven of those that were doing that in 1998-97. And I couldn't play in every one. I just couldn't afford to be gone seven days and then writing that many checks for all these expenses. And when I checked with some of the charities, two of them made about a thousand dollars on their event. A couple made a few hundred dollars and there's a couple of the seven that actually lost money because of the middleman needing money for food, need money for mm -hmm. prizes, need money for golf, need money for the golf cart. And they were losing money by the end of the time they put the, their event on. And I thought, that you put that much work into it and not make any money, that doesn't make any sense. And golf tournaments are a lot of work. Like, they are a lot of work. They are a lot of work. Yeah. Like people don't realize. Like it seems like it would be easy, like just go put people on the golf course and let it go. It's, it's not that at all. No. It, it, it would be nice. But. And, and it's also, there's a lot of upfront costs. Like just, just to get one event off the ground and each one of those seven had those same, those same costs. Right? Correct. And uh, so, so you pull all seven together and, that, and you sort I, of mentioned it real quick at the beginning, but how did that first year go? Well, that first year we, uh, I talked to all the charities and I said, what do you think about rolling this all into one big, huge event? And all seven said, we'll be glad to try that. So from making a thousand dollars, a couple of them did in their tournaments, that first year, those seven charities, we raised $17,500, which to me was outrageous which, that we raised that much money. Which for a single event is, is a good dollar amount. Oh, like, wonderful. I mean, that's not, that's, that's, that's not first year event money. No. no. That's, that's, I mean, so the two that had made a thousand dollars, they each received a check for $3,500. And the ones that, even the ones that lost money, we wrote them a check for $1,500. And they supplied a little staffing for mm -hmm. us to put it on. So that second year, I think we did 14 charities. We doubled the number of charities, but we also doubled our money up to $33,000. And I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of, this is kind of snowballing. This mm -hmm. is kind of growing. And in third year, we go from 33,000 to 71,000. And for year four, I think we're right at $100,000 that this community raised. Uh, and we we're fortunate to give away to a lot of different charities. We've given away probably well over 50 some charities well, in and our community. I, I've got a list here of the charity and i don't know if this is like current past total but i mean this is it's like area community foundation chad of iowa diversity center of iowa flickinger learning center which i remember when i was there we got some help from you guys uh friends of muscatine art center friends of pine creek grist mill junior achievement lutheran services lsi parents as teachers mcsa the shelter the domestic violence shelter homeless prevention the vision clinic uh the scholarship program you mentioned this is, I'm only halfway through this list, folks. Uh, Muscatine Charities Preschool Transportation Program, the School District's Parents and Teachers Program, the High School Special Education Work Experience, the Muscatine Community Y, so Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Kids Club, the Partners Program, Muscatine Legal Service, the Police Mentor Program, Shop with a Cop, Pearl City Outreach, Rebuilding Together, Red Cross, 
Writing for Success, which is awesome, uh, Senior Resources, Significant Souls, Special Olympics, Laundry Love, uh, Trinity Muscatine Public Health, and the Youth Sports Foundation. Like, that is a list of uh, basically every big charity that affects a lot of people in Muscatine. It touches a lot of lives. It and, really does. You know, I, I, I sit here and I, I look at Muscatine and all the things that, that happen, and there's one thing that's consistent. Well, I, not one thing, but there's a lot of things that are just these staples of what Muscatine is. And the Muscatine Charities Golf Outing has become one of them, you know. And it's something that I know a lot of people look forward to every year. You put on a great event. I mean, there's no question. Um, and when you see pictures, I mean, watch social media after the event. You'll see tons of pictures of a bunch of people having fun, playing golf, raising money. There's like, at every hole you've got stuff going on. It, it's crazy. So what does the golf tournament actually look like? And I know, are, are you officially full for this year now? We are officially full. We thought, now, we thought you would be by the time you got here. There, and really, we only have two people, individuals, that are on the waiting list. So we're going to try and get them in there. So if you, still, uh, if you still would like to participate this Thursday, mm -hmm. you can call the Geneva Pro Shop at 262-8894. Why does it not surprise me you have that number memorized? Um, well, <laughs> it's, it's because uh, that, that's my job. Well, you know, we're going to take a quick segue off of this, and we're going to come right back to the tournament. So the other thing that... Taco maybe didn't mention in his little like ways you may know me is Taco is a great golfer, um, has played golf his entire life, basically, um, and was actually just inducted into the South Dakota. Was it which Hall of Fame was it? Well, it's the South Dakota Golf Hall of Fame. The Golf Hall of Fame. I wasn't sure if it was like yeah. a golfer sports. Yeah. So he's like a Hall of Fame golfer in South Dakota. <laughs> like he legitimately could have could have had a professional career and chose tacos and muscatine. I do have a professional career well, and it's I, making other people's lives better. Yes, absolutely. Let me rephrase it. A professional <laughs> golf career is what I meant. I, you well, know, the thing that I've also found now that I'm talking on screen more, I'm not very accurate in what I say often. That, <laughs> no, you're fine. It's fine. So um, I know you wouldn't have brought that up if I didn't. So, But the, the tournament itself, what does a day at the Muscatine Charities Golf Outing look like? Well, we're going to start at 11.30 with lunch for everyone. Um, there are several hole sponsors that have donated their hole to different charities in our community. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have about 10 or 11 holes out there that charities are going to be there and telling folks what they do for our community. And I think that's just tremendous to let them tell people exactly what they do. Other holes, we're going to have some wonderful sponsors like uh, Impact Nutrition. They'll be there with their stick poles, and they're going to show you how to exercise and make your golf game better. And, and Autumn will be here later, and I'm 90% sure in the pictures that she brought with, one may be of Mr. Taco using one of these sticks. Oh, well. Just, just so stay with us. Like you, that's, you know how good TV shows oh, like bait you with something awesome at the end there you go stay with us till the end well folks. i didn't know that i was being filmed when i tried the stick last year but oh well it's it's very impactful you do now. it is impactful <laughs> and it is good for your golf game to be able to gain that flexibility that yep. you need in golf uh, as you get older in life it's not as easy as it used to be so but anyway, these other holes, we've got some beverage holes, we've got games on a lot of the different holes that everybody will be have, having fun and trying to win prizes. Um, we're going to have a, a raffle, a 50-50 raffle. Um, after golf, we're going to have a nice dinner, and then we'll have our auctions, our silent and live auctions, and we'll wrap up the night um, with uh, everybody being a winner because uh, we're going to make a, a difference in a lot of people's lives in Muscatine. You do. And that's, you know, there are 
good programs and then there are great programs that are extremely effective and Muscatine Charities, what, what I love about you guys, every penny that you guys raise turns around and goes back out. Like nobody takes a salary, nobody takes, I mean, I think you like pay for postage, I, you know, for the mailings and stuff like that. But I mean, literally everything goes right back in. Like when you talk, like if you look at Charity Navigator, they always have like these percentages on, you know, how much of the money raised should go into programs. And literally yours is 100%. Like anything over like 80, 85, 90 is great. And you're at hundred percent. Well, we do have a separate fundraiser in the, in the spring mm -hmm. that we do a raffle and we raise money. And the folks that buy these raffle tickets know we're raising money for our seed money mm -hmm. to, to use for postage and anything else we might need to get the big tournament started. But every penny that is our board of directors is all voluntary. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets paid a dime. And everybody knows that every penny that's spent at our golf event is going to go to a charity or a preschool scholarship. Mm -hmm. so. so let me ask you this. What are, as you look over the next year or two, what are the, what's one of the things you're most excited to see coming? that you've, just in Muscatine in general, just with the golf outing, anything fun and exciting coming up? Well, I think every day is an adventure here in Muscatine. <laughs> you are absolutely dead on. I can hardly wait to see the 40-foot watermelon. Yep. I mean, yep. that's going to be pretty awesome. That's that, going to be a, a, a great spot to take family pictures. Yeah, it, everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the clam man, but a watermelon. Exactly. Well, where else do you see that? I mean, we, nowhere. Muscatine is very, very unique, but very special. Yeah. Because we have a lot of things a lot of other people would like to have, and they don't. Yeah, and I yeah. think, you know, it's one of those things, having grown up here, um, you, I don't want to say you take it for granted, because that's maybe not, I think a lot of people appreciate it, and they, I don't know that they take it for granted, but I think they, they don't realize how unique it is. Like, you can appreciate, like, scholarships for, uh, you know, like, say you had a scholarship for your kid to go to preschool. You appreciate it, and you reckon, like, you know, it's not that. Right. But, you know, they don't always necessarily, and I, I know I didn't for a long time, realize how different that is from other communities, right? Like, which only makes you appreciate it more. Sure. But um, I think that's definitely a thing that I wish everybody was able to have that perspective. Right. Sometimes we just, uh, I think, take things for granted. Yeah. And um, we should never take anything for granted. Yeah. I mean, somebody has to do the work to make things happen. And uh, our community is so generous. And when I say we, it's not me, it's not the board of directors, it's everyone in this community that steps up and does something for charities to make this successful. Well, what I always look forward to, and especially now with, with what we do here, it's absolutely amazing and fun to watch how it all comes together. Because Muscatine has always, I mean, like every community, you have problems that you need to address, right? And it's always fun to watch how they come together. And like, I love seeing how like Muscatine Charities, it's, it's somewhat a group you would expect, but then there's always like all these other folks that are involved that it's always fun to watch. Like, okay, who's gonna be involved next, right? Um, because somebody always does step up and um, on behalf of the community and everybody that received taco bucks as a kid and <laughs> everybody that's gotten a scholarship or anything, um, I wanna thank you and the rest of the Muscatine Charities and just everybody that's ever donated uh, on behalf of the community, thank you. Because I know, I know Muscatine sometimes doesn't always do a great job of saying thank you. So um, don't ever think that it's not seen and not appreciated because it absolutely is. Well, thank you, Chris, for what yeah. you do for Muscatine. It's wonderful. I just sit here and look pretty, right? <laughs> that's, that's all I do. No, um, but thanks for stopping in. Yeah, it's well, thanks for fun, having me. I fun as always. That. Yeah, it's gonna be a busy week. Yeah. It's gonna be a great week. Uh, it's our 25th anniversary. It is. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty special for me because I just, 
you know, I must have started this when I was 12 years old or something. Like Absolutely. That. And well, and I mean, because I had talk about, yeah, yeah, and I'm only like 22. So, I mean, that makes sense. Yes, right? it does. It does. All right. <laughs> we well, wish. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and stop out and see if I can get some pictures on Thursday. Awesome. Some other stuff. We'd so, love to have you out. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do that. And uh, holy cow, congratulations on Thank you. Uh, be, I, and I know it's going to be a great event. So I'm just going to tell you congratulations now. Well, thank you. And make much. sure you let us know how it all comes out. I we'll, will do that. We'll make sure, sure it's out. Yeah. So thanks for coming in. And Muscatine, we'll be right back with legend number two, Dave Bakke. And if you don't know who that is, you're not from Muscatine. That's true. That's true. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. We just don't work out in a single plane of motion. Good morning again, Muscatine. We're back. And again, as always, if you could only hear the conversations that happen off camera. Um, so I'm back with I, I, Muscatine's own fill in the blank, Jack Hanna, um, uh, Irwin the Crocodile Hunter, and Dave Bakke, right? Like those three, like legends of the naturalist world, right? Wow, those are tall trees in that forest there to, hey, to well, be with. But you know, here's the thing, and this is, this is much like, uh, so actually let's take a half a step back before I go down memory lane here. Because <laughs> <laughs> Dave didn't know I was in it. So um, if you could introduce yourself for those that may not know you, which I can't imagine there's a lot, but like just give them like a little bit of what you've done over your time here. Okay, uh, yeah, my name is Dave Bakke. Um, I work for the Muscatine County Conservation Board. Uh, and my job is, I, it's actually has split, split duties. I'm a naturalist, and that's been the majority of my job. But I'm also um, a park ranger, or a park officer now. It used to be park rangers, they switched the title to park officer for Muscatine County. So I do lots of conservation education programs, but I also have time that is devoted to patrolling in our county parks. Um, I live out at the Salisbury Bridge Recreation Area where we have a campground right there. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I spend a lot of my, my park officer duties at, at Discovery, or I'm sorry, at Salisbury, Salisbury Bridge, but also Discovery Park, Deep Lakes, Jack Sugar Park. We have a number of conservation areas around the county. So I'm curious, did you ever think of changing your last name from Bakke to Smith? Because A, it would have been easier to spell, but I mean, you could have, you know, taken after the ranger from Yogi Bear, Ooh. right? Like, hmm. I had not thought about that. Yeah, I, you know, see, connections, right? So Dave, uh, how, how long have you been with the Conservation Board? Um, 35 years here. Yeah. Okay. So I remember, and honestly, the, the parallels for this for me are kind of like crazy. Um, I remember as a kid, you coming around and doing 
the presentations, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't remember the, like, what specific animal or anything you had, but like, like the taco bucks, right? One mm -hmm. of the things that was like a, a constant in a muscatine child's life was learning about animals from Dave Bakke. Like, that's been a thing for a long time. And muscatine is extremely lucky to have had you for as long as we have. And uh, I mean, Wyatt, my son, has been to your presentations and um, it's just, it's, it's been amazing to watch how consistently awesome you've been for a long time. Um, it, it seems like it's been easy. I've always found it easy working with kids. Um, adults too, because I find adults are just as interested in kids in conservation. Um, it, for a lot of people, it's just not something that they grew up. They had different interests and their yeah. careers were very different. Um, but they're still very interested in learning about like even life history stuff of frogs or raptors and things like that. So those are always fun programs too. The, uh, the one I think about when I think of you now is, this was a couple of years, it would have been pre-COVID. Um, there was, I don't remember what the actual event out at Discovery Park was, but it was a tour, like a whole thing. And, you know, we took the kids through, they went through, oh, you know what, I actually think it was a field trip for Mulberry. Oh, okay. Now that I think about it. Um, but Wyatt and all the kids, were just having a blast, you know, cause you went through the, the building and then we went out to the Raptors and then they were down with the tadpoles. And, but I, I tend to sit back and I watch, not just the kids, but I kind of just watch what always is going on, like who's doing what. And I think the parents were, to your point, as intrigued and engaged as the kids were. We weren't showing it, you know what I mean? Like we weren't right. like running up there being the first in line, but like every parent, like we were standing like behind and like, every parent was absolutely listening to everything you said, um, especially uh, over in the Raptor area. Mm -hmm. That is, so for those that don't know what the Raptor area is, what, what have you guys built out there? Um, it, it, it's a, a wooden slat enclosure, uh, but that's where we have two owls and a red-tailed hawk. That, that's where they live, and they live there year round. Um, and we use them for education programs. A uh, couple of those birds are getting to where they're less comfortable in front of people, and so we do fewer programs with them. But they're still out there on public view. Um, and I, I think they're a little more comfortable, a little more okay with people being around them because they're inside, they mm -hmm. feel safe in their enclosure there. Uh, but one of them, um, our barred owl, we still do many, many programs with her. She's, uh, you know, when we do those, we have them standing on our, mm -hmm. on our fist, on a gloved fist. Um, and she's one that will stand there for a long time. Uh, and just, she just kind of looks around every so often. If she gets fidgety, she'll take off because she can fly. So we have a leash attached to her legs, but she'll go out, she'll circle around and of course the kids if we're doing a program in a classroom they're always oh, you know, right. excited because it is exciting I, and interesting to see but then she comes right back onto our fist and so how like how do you even begin a relationship like that with the bird because i mean obviously it wouldn't it wouldn't do that like if i just walked up there with a glove it wouldn't work like probably not very well right yeah like yeah no i guarantee you it wouldn't work yeah. well because i'd be more fidgety than the owl would yeah. be but like how do you even like start that because i mean that's essentially your role as a naturalist is is right. that right that that's part of it and we have many other animals that we share and if you were with with, with white on the field trip you probably remember a time when we were inside we're looking at all the reptiles and yep. avians. so for the raptors, I'd never worked with them before I went to Muscatine County, and they already had birds there. Um, and so a lot of it was just getting used to the birds. And it, some, when I started, I would just stand outside the cage and talk to them. And I, I didn't think of it at the time. I was just thinking, and there weren't the resources at that time, or at least I didn't know of them to like help me learn to do that. I mean, I did some 
some research looking in. I remember going to the library and checking mm -hmm. out, checking in science magazines for that stuff. Now it's just it's just a it, click it, it's and clicks yeah. away. And there's a nice YouTube video to show you exactly how exactly. to do it. Exactly. Right. Um, but a lot was just getting used to them, me getting used to them, uh, and I think it was working the same way the other way. And then I would go into the cage and just kind of hang out for a while. Um, and I didn't try to push it, though I was pretty eager to say, okay, I want to you know, uh -huh. work with these birds. And eventually got to that, to where I would get them off, the, off their perch and onto my hand, which was not easy at first. They would, they would jump and they would, it looked like they were trying to fly away. And the word for that is, is baiting, um, which, which means flying. It's, I, think, I believe it's an older English word, and this means that they're trying to fly to get away. Um, but they have leather anklets um, that have a long strap on them that we would clip our leash to. And Great. so by moving slowly, talking to them the whole time, um, I could get to where I could was close enough that I could grab those leashes, and then when they baited, I still had the birds. And then it was it was just a matter of doing that over and over, um, rewarding them with little bits yeah. of food. Um, but eventually, once I started working with them, once they got where they would stand on my hand, then it's just time and spending time doing that. Um, and the two birds that were there when I started are no longer no longer there. Um, but our, we have a great horned owl that's been living with us since 1993. Um, and we used him for education programs up, up until probably COVID time. And even before then, he was starting to become less tolerant. And I could, I could sense that. Is that just like becoming a cranky old man sort of a thing? And I, I mean, referred to that um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I'm getting that way. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I, it's a guy thing, right? Yeah, apparently. Old, but, um, old guys, we get cranky. It's yeah. what we do. It's just for them, it's like at age 20, for instance, right. that's pretty old. That's well beyond their normal lifespan. Right. Um, and I kept him active. I would use him in programs, but for very short times, like maybe mm -hmm. two or three minutes. And then he was, I could tell that he was starting to get stressed. And um, so we would switch out. Um, but right now, we just have the one, the one bird that we're using, our red-tailed hawk is 22 years old, which is very old for red-tailed hawk. And right now he just, he's not cooperative at all. And so our, our new naturalist, and we, had, we hired a, a new naturalist to, to take my place on the education yep. team. Um, I, I, I'm forgetting the exact date he started, but I would say it's been a, a month or more that he's been there. Um, and he comes with lots more raptor background than I had in doing rehab work and doing bird programs. Um, so he's got some ideas of things that he wants to work with the birds a little differently, things that I wasn't aware of. Um, I'm really glad that he came on board um, to help with that part of the programming. Well, and that's, you know, the one thing that, you know, when you look at an organization making a transition, because with you retiring, you know, he, he's on the clock here, folks. Like, he's got probably, what, 30 hours left? Four days. Four days, so yeah. Hours. He's not counting yeah. down or anything. Yeah. But um, there's, uh, and the office manager is also retiring. So mm -hmm. you guys have stepped up. And Margaret wrote an article about this. Um, we'll make sure we link to it in the, in the uh, comments and stuff for you. But, um, you know, with... Michelle, and then you've got like the new one coming mm -hmm. on. This is a nice transition, but I think the one thing that I'm happy to see is the base and the foundation that you've given, let's call it the next generation, right? Okay. Like, you know, everybody loves your programs. Everybody knows pretty much what they are. I mean, not necessarily like week in, week out what you're doing, right? but they know what you guys do. And there isn't a single person who when you go, if you say Dave Bakke, most everybody knows what it is. But if you go, the owl guy, the, the lizard guy that comes from the, and they're like, oh, yeah, that, that's always awesome, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's going to be exciting to see what they can do from the foundation you guys have built over the last 30 years. Yeah, and you know, Michelle's been a big part of that. She's yep. been here now 17 years. Yep. So she's, 
have time to kind of make her own yeah she's like the nice little transition piece right yeah because like we were talking um her and a couple of other ladies came on to talk about the day camp mm -hmm. uh the christian day camp and you know how it, if i remember right it was out at salisbury and like you guys were an active role in it and there's always you know they were talking about like baiting animals before and putting like um some sort of like the fluorescent, fluorescent powder if, powder out so that mm -hmm. you could then see where they all went mm -hmm. and i'm like that's ridiculously awesome like and it's just it's a normal tuesday for you guys right yeah kind of <laughs> yeah i mean but yes that's the kind of thing that we that we might be doing we're all and we're always looking for different twists on something we've done uh, maybe something using newer technology yeah. sometimes so looking back over the last 30 years, any favorite stories? Anytime like an animal got away during a presentation and any? We've, we've never had, I, I, usually we're doing those programs indoors. So if they well, away, yeah, not we, like got away, got away, but like. But, but no, I know, well, we've had a few that have escaped in the nature center. When we were out at Salisbury, we had a snake that escaped. Um, I, I still think somebody was trying to take it because the lid of, the, of his aquarium was stuck in place, but it was open. Um, and it was a big fox snake. And it just, these came in on Monday morning and oh my gosh, it's gone. And we were open on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. So we figured somebody was back there and tried to get them. We looked and of course snakes can go just about anywhere in any building. Yeah. I was sitting there look, looking at the, at the bricks where there are holes in there. And I thought, and I thought that's kind of a cool, Thing to see those holes there but a snake could disappear in there and oh thanks but, yeah. we're, we're all gonna be freaking out now every time no, we walk in here like, no. like is sure there a snake no, snake no well the nice thing is all these holes that so from the original they're only about that deep so yeah but but that snake uh, we, we just figured uh, he must have we hoped he left the building and had gone out and just it made his escape um, but we found it um, several weeks later and it showed up in our director's office um, while he had someone in there visiting, I think a salesperson, and this snake was winding his way down through the Venetian blinds on his window. Um, and I don't know if Kurt saw it first or the lady saw it first, but um, there was a little bit of a freak out there. Oh man, I would have, and, I would have lost it. Of course we were all, oh good, we found the snake and we're in there. Right. I think I would have lost it for about 15 seconds and then I would have been fine. Yeah. But I, I guarantee you, like, I would have looked at it and gone, is that what I think it is? It is what I think it is. Holy bleepity bleep yeah. and bleep, bleep, bleep. And, and here's the thing, I would know in the back of my mind, like, I know you guys would have it under control. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. cause I assume you just corralled him and Put him back in his aquarium. And, and he was probably him. happy to be home, I would imagine. Um, maybe in some ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, holy cow. That would... Yeah. You know, and throughout my career, and I didn't plan on it, I just... I, I chose to do it. But at different times, we have helped people with animals, like, in there that are in their yard injured, for instance, we may go and pick them up. Um, partly because we maybe have a little bit more of a comfort mm -hmm. level in saying, yeah, okay, that poor owl, it's injured, it's dangerous, it's got big talons out there ready to grab you, but we've got you know, the skills, I guess you'd yeah. say, in collecting those and getting them up to rehabilitation. Um, and we can't always do it because we have other things going on. Right. Uh, but I, I've always thought that was kind of fun. And I was just, we were looking through photos that um, my wife is putting together for our retirement get together. But I mean, it's, we've, I've got several times, four times I've gone out to collect injured bald eagles, which are, um, they can be very dangerous. They're I, big birds. I mean, they got a seriously large beak on them. So, okay. I, we got to dive down this a little bit here because, okay, so for scale, wingspan of a bald eagle is about what? Uh, seven to eight feet. Okay, so like take my wingspan and add like a foot on Couple each feet. end, yeah. foot and a half on each end, yeah. right? They're big. 
they're huge. Okay, so how, how big is it? So, I, of course, we've gone over to the Lock and Dam, and like I've seen him, but like, how big is a bald eagle's head actually? Like, um, and be, it, like compared to other raptors, it's it's larger. Though some of the owls would have a, I mean, a like, bigger skull, but their skull is shaped different. I mean, is it like? Mango size? Is it like? Oh, uh, probably not that big. It would be, you, and actually with birds, we uh, we often would be surprised at how small their body is if you removed all the feathers. But I mean, their skull would easily fit like in the back of your hand, like. Okay, that, so well, that's still big. Up. Like, that, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. serious. Yeah, and so some of those are kind of adventuresome because they're never like sitting along the road just waiting to be picked up. Things like eagles are often wild places, and one of them. I'd recently been talking to some of the rehabbers, and they said, my gosh, we have, we have to handle bald eagles. We're wearing visors. And uh, one of them was excited because they had just received a, a retired uh, um, jacket or coat, overcoat from their local fire department that they would wear because you've got all these canvas sleeves and everything. I was just thinking you need one of those uh I don't know what it is, costume, uniform, protective gear that like the cops use with the dogs? Um, like, not quite to that level. Right, that well, that's what I would want. Yeah. I would want that. <laughs> yeah, well, one in particular, it was way as near the Cedar River, but literally way out in the middle of nowhere. And so I just heard this. And so I put on, this is like in late May, so I, but I put on an overcoat and I, and I went to our shop and I borrowed... Um, a visor that our staff would use if they were using chainsaws. It's yeah. got uh -huh. mesh here. Yep. And, um, and then we've got sets of, of welder's gloves, heavy leather uh -huh. gloves for handling the birds. And I went out, my wife went along with me because I needed um, some help with, with getting into the areas out in a farm paddock area. Um, and I had to climb over all these. I couldn't, wasn't able to get them open because they had padlocks on them. Mm -hmm. And the guy who had spotted said, it's in a shed back there. So I was climbing over these things, dressing all this heavy gear, sweating bullets. And I found the bird. And, it's, and it, was, it was in a cattle shed. And w w when I showed up, it squeezed through a little hole and took off. It couldn't fly. Um, but it, they could run surprisingly fast. And so I was just following it, following it. And I finally caught it. Um, I had a big fishing landing net that I just kind of put over it so it can't move its head around much, and it'll, that helps to secure the wings. And so I'm carrying it, just kind of hugging it, but then facing away from me back to my vehicle. And I was trying to scramble over all these different gates holding him. And I was thinking, ah, I'm foolish. I should have brought somebody else with me who's, who's comfortable with the situation. But there usually just isn't someone. But I got back with them, and that was when we got it up to Iowa City to a um, group called the Rare Group, and they do raptor rehab. Well, we actually stole one of their best volunteers. That's who's working for us now. Luke, Luke huh. Hart is his yep. name. Um, and it was eventually released. It, it, ha it was a young bird. It had, um, they don't know if it had been sick at one time mm -hmm. and couldn't find food, but it got to a point where it was uh, dehydrated and was had lost a lot of weight. So they just had to really kind of care for it, feed it up, and then they released it. Wow, that's awesome. But although I took a paddle boat out of the Mississippi once to pick up a pelican that was injured and just floating in the water, and it was injured. And so I got down there, and I had, my understanding was that the bird was on shore, and I got down there and I said, no, it swam out there. And the, the nearest available boat was a little, literally a little two-seat paddle boat. And so the lady on the paddle boat went along. So we paddled out there. We paddled up really slow. And the pelican was just sitting there. It was very listless. Um, and we just turned it around. And I just reached out. And I grabbed the beak first. I learned that long ago. Control their beak. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. And then I grabbed them. And pelicans are as big. Um, in some ways, are bigger than eagles. I mean, their wingspan is the same. And so we just kind of hugged this, brought it back, and um, that one I believe we transported up north of Waterloo to a rehab facility. I, you know, we I, should like do a thing where you like sit down and just like tell us all these stories about I random know. wildlife I, things that have done that could come oh, in Muscatine. That would be awesome. That would be like, that'd be... It could go on and on. You know, no, that's, well, that's good. It should. 
Well, thank you again for everything you've done You're welcome. for the community and also Amy as well. Um, yeah. You know, you've made a lot of kids education more intriguing, interesting, and definitely more creepy crawly than that, what it would have been. Yeah, and that was my goal, really. My job is to, I, I feel my job has been to spark an interest in kids yeah. uh, that, hey, you know, you have to be careful around things like snakes and turtles and things like that, but they're not something to be afraid of. Yeah. Most of them are, they're gonna scatter if we give them a chance, but there's interesting and they're important parts of our environment. So if you could leave the folks at Muscatine with like one last piece of wisdom when it comes to nature and uh, you know, whatever it is, what would it be? Um, might be being tolerant of wildlife um, and giving them a chance because there are a lot of cases where wildlife can be a nuisance but in most cases they're just trying to survive um, and we, people have had such an impact on on the landscape that it, it is harder for animals. And that's why some of them are declining in numbers um, and not because people want them to go away, just because of how you know, we've, we've changed things. So if people can be tolerant, you know, if you see bumblebees around flowers, you don't have to go out and spray for bumblebees to get rid of them, they're helping, they're pollinating. Yeah. Um, if you see snakes in your yard, um, you, there are things you can do, and we, that, that could be a whole other show. I know. It sounds like we've got a couple more show ideas. Yeah, now right. that you're retired, you're going to be able to come talk with me all day. Oh, but I'm, I'm moving out of I town. Know. Yeah, so I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll send Luke over we, there. Yeah. But but really, there, there yeah. are ways to deal with those, and there. Are, and I find information online, and I'm going, how am I going to handle this? And I just Google. It's amazing. You can Google the strangest uh, things, and you'll say video. Yep. There's videos of yep. how to. I helped a guy with a skunk, and he wanted to know, how do I get rid of this skunk? He caught it in a live trap. And he had some ideas, but he wanted to kind of run them by me, which basically was cover it gently with a tarp. And because he was going to have to reach in and open the trap and then mm -hmm. kind of prop it open. And, it, and it, the instructions he found, which um, I agreed with him when he suggested, was just move slowly, be quiet, and just... Do what you've got to do. If you have it covered with a tarp, if he sprays, it's it's a tarp. It'll yeah. either get thrown yeah. away or right. attract it. But he found out, you know, he texted me later in the day and said, I did exactly what we talked about. It worked perfect. And awesome. I opened that trap and I just stepped back and after a few minutes later that skunk ran out and psh, and he wasn't bothered by the skunk. Right. He just didn't know how to get it out of the yep. trap because he was trapping raccoons yep. who were devastating his yard, which they are now yeah. too. Um, so, and so I thought, I really don't think I did much, but I listened to him yeah. and I agreed that he had a good plan for doing that. Awesome. Well, a lot of it. well, again, thank you. And we'll make sure that we keep in touch with, Michelle and I were talking about yeah. like having Luke and all, you know, kind of getting a regular thing and maybe getting some of the animals on the show and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Well, it'll be you. awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. Of it's, course. It's been a, good, a fun run in Muscatine here yeah. all these years, so I was glad to come on and share a little bit here. Absolutely. Thank you very much, yeah, sir. you're welcome. Great to see you as always. Yep. And we'll be right back with Autumn and Scott from Impact and some info on the workout to end. We'll see you in just a minute. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers Big Sisters. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. We just don't work out in a single plane of motion.
River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. Welcome back. And as you can tell, we've got a couple familiar faces with us this morning. Um, for those that may not recognize you, I don't know how somebody that watches the show wouldn't, <laughs> but if you could just introduce yourself real quick and uh, maybe a little bit of background. Okay, so my name is Autumn Schultz. I'm co-owner and nutrition coach um, at Impact Fitness and Nutrition. And um, Chris took my job. It's not quite, <laughs> it's not quite how that no. went. Um, <laughs> so I was also because of my hair color changing like six times in a year. So people might recognize me as the former host. Yes. But um, I do miss it though. But well, this has kept been... me very busy. <laughs> well, and that's, you know, when Autumn started hosting the show, um, I, I always knew at some point impact would become so busy that you wouldn't be able to continue doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think it all just happened faster than what we all thought, which oh is my gosh, great. Yeah, and it's, it's absolutely great to see a small business in Muscatine go from, you know, you, how long have you guys been impact now? So we opened Four, December of 2018. Five. So five we years. were yeah. Impact Athletic Performance, yep. and then just last um, winter right. we changed our name. Yep. So okay, and you guys. Oh, Scott. We should. Oh probably, yeah, we should probably. We should probably, probably just not like totally dominate. There is a whole another guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably introduce this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Scott Schultz. Um, at least I think I am today. <laughs> you are. Um, co-owner of um, Impact Fitness and Nutrition and um, the main coach for most of our uh, group fitness um, and uh, personal training programs. Um, yeah, that's me. You, well, you'd also probably... Former, former uh, uh, Muskie High School uh, golf, golf coach. coach. I've stepped down from both positions, yep. boys and girls. And it's a lot like, you know, you were talking about... Um, you know, with Autumn and hosting, yep. serving two masters was not doing either one of those any good. Right. And uh, the stress that put basically on, on both of them had to make that choice. And obviously uh, being, a, being a high school golf coach doesn't pay the bills. Right. So um, some fun money, but uh, no, I had to, had to make that decision. And, and that was the right time this year to step down from both programs, uh, hand them over to someone else and obviously uh, focus on impact. And a child. And, and a child. child. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's yeah. As he, you know, it's funny, like as he got older, like, you could just see like, yep, that's getting stressful. You know what I mean? Just because you, you guys were always going 16 different ways. Yeah. I mean, and you know, when it's just the two of you, it's one thing, but then mm -hmm. when you've got a one, two, three year old floating around, it's yeah, a whole it'll be three. different ball game. And I think with us too, I mean, we're still part of the board for Walked in Alzheimer's. So mm -hmm. we now have that. Um, I'm a part of the Theo Wolf Foundation as the graphic designer. And then, of course, we still do what we do at the end of the years for uh, Red Kettle campaign. So yeah. we still stay busy. Yes. So tell us about the workout to end. Okay. Because, oh, actually, quick thing. Quick, give them a quick overview of uh, Alzheimer's Awareness Month real quick, mm -hmm. what you guys do, and then how the workout ties into it. Yeah. So um, June is uh, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness. So that is our major thing that um, we focus on, making sure that we can get purple out in Muscatine. Oh. Um, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, so we make sure that we bring out that purple needs to be in Muscatine for the month of June. And then what we also do is uh, we do our major fundraiser, which is this workout to end. And for us, we have a personal connection to it. Um, now two personal connections. Um, especially how important it is to help bring this awareness out and making sure that people know the importance of the funds and where it goes, the research that happens behind it. And, and for us, for this weekend, um, we unfortunately weren't able to host our ride to end. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother Nature seemed to have other plans as well as a, rise, uh, a very high <laughs> We tried river. to plan it three times and Mother Nature said, yeah. nope, you're not having it. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, bike riding in this particular workout, but um, yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, the personal connection is, is losing my mom. Um, holy cow, almost 
it was 2007, so quick math is what, almost 16 years ago now. And I lost my dad in September of last year, but there was, there was beyond the stroke that he had earlier in, in the year, um, that early onset uh, dementia was, was really starting to take hold. And so um, the importance of it, that's, that's why it is to me. Um, everyone knows someone that has a, a relative go through Alzheimer's and whether it's early onset dementia. And so, you know, it's, it's a lot like we know someone who has had cancer and or who has know someone who has had cancer. Uh, it's very prevalent in our society. The funding is where, uh, you know, an event like this, even though it's very small, local for Muscatine, goes into the greater good of Alzheimer's uh, research. So this is research not for just the 6 million Americans that have it, but also the 11 million caretakers that also are not getting paid to do this. So every dollar counts, and that's why we really focus on this. So our workout to end, um, it's actually during one of our class times. It's going to be this Saturday, July 1st, which I cannot believe I'm saying July. Yeah, it, um, I was doing the same thing yesterday <laughs> like, when oh we were looking goodness. at the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> So it's July 1st, it's at 8.45 a.m. and it's at our gym. So we will be having an entire workout during that time. So it is half performance, which is the workout. And then we actually do our stick mobility and recovery for the last half of it. So you get to have that nice, fun and functional, fun and functional, F U N. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. And functional. I'm with you. This is for everyone. So this could be for someone that is just starting off. This could be for someone that is an experienced uh, within working out and our fitness. We use sandbags and kettlebells. We'll have body weight movement as well. Um, majority of the time, especially when it comes to bigger classes, we tend to pair people together as a partner work. But you're doing the workout together. It's mm -hmm. not waiting for one and the other. Um, and then we'll have our recovery part. We'll have some delicious snacks and beverages afterwards. But of course, we're gonna have information about the upcoming walk in September as well. So we are already pushing that out. I mean, we, we fundraise year round. So that's our goal. And that was, you know, Megan was here a couple weeks ago uh, talking about that same sort of concept. Like, you know, I love the fundraising year round concept mm -hmm. because you, not only make it easier right like you know you don't have this big goal that you're just stressing to hit like you just yeah bite it off in smaller chunks but also it keeps the subject in front of people right mm -hmm. um and it it makes it so that you know it, it's somewhat ironic that it's a memory based cause and need yeah and staying in front of people keeps it in the front of their memory right mm -hmm. Absolutely. and one thing that we talked about and, I, and i've even noticed it for me is as we've gone through and like we put like all of the Alzheimer Association's videos on our website and yeah. we're, we're pulling in even more um, content so that it's available here and easy, but also listening to like Dr. Saga's dementia series and things like that. The thing that I'm noticing is it's something that needs to kind of be in your periphery all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you know what those like w early warning signs and things like that, you'll notice them in your friends and family and you can start having those conversations yeah. because, you know, as, as Scott, we've talked many times, um, and I've got some friends who have had parents go through it, you know, the, the challenge is the person's changing. You, you don't necessarily notice all at once. You know, it's not like a switch flips, you know, it's like this gradual thing. And oftentimes they don't want to admit it, right? Because mm -hmm they don't a they may not recognize what's going on but b you know they're afraid oh, i'm not gonna be able to drive anymore i'm gonna lose my independence or i'm gonna you know and so it's it's something that is a it's a challenge all the way around the horn mm -hmm. but once people take that first step things start getting better right because you can get resources you can learn how to manage it not manage it but live with it um and that's what I love about like the stuff like the bike ride and the workout. It gives us all a reason to talk about it mm -hmm. and, you know, keep it on the front of people's minds so that when they interact with people, it's, it's there. 
I think one of the, uh, you're talking about Dr. Saga, the first one he did was about the benefits of exercise in mm -hmm. regards to dementia and Alzheimer's. And I know Which it's quick on... plug. Yeah. Oh, you were, oh my goodness. See, I forget. She's a ho. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you go to YouTube and go to Discover Muscatine, they are amazing and they have it recorded so you can always go back and watch them. And quick plug, Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, oh, see, it she's, is, well, no, she's out. Well, no, you already said it. I know, but we can okay, well, it Okay, well, we'll say it again, but yes. Wednesday. Uh, is the next one uh, out at the school district building. Of course, mm -hmm. we'll be broadcasting it live for you. We also put it in our newsletters too as our oh. community event. Awesome. We want to get that information out there, especially uh, we have another community event that Taco talked about earlier, and we will be at Hole 17 for that. Chris, do you have those pictures of the mobility, <laughs> the stick mobility? So this is what will, I, are you doing this again on 17? Yep. The yes. stick mobility? Yeah. Uh, so, Taco, uh, we'll this make sure you this see this, you. this little clip. This I is will for you. Get this, I'll print it and frame it for him, and that will be my gift to him uh, on Ooh, Thursday. That's, I, I even have that. one of, uh, with Brad Bark, too, Ooh, yeah. so I'll have to Perfect. get that one out there as well. Notice I'm smart. She has no pictures of me doing this. <laughs> no, I didn't get a picture of him doing it. But So we'll be out on hole 17. Oh, and speaking of which, before I backtrack even more, um, we're in the Muscatine Mall. Yeah. for the workout oh, yeah. to end. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you actually go around to where A&G Products is, we have our own parking lot between mm -hmm. the old lumber and A&G, so that's where our main entrance is, or just come in through the mall we'll entrance. The mall entrance yeah. we have yeah. Our gate will be up. We have two yeah. places. So yeah. for you old time Muscatine people here, go back around behind the JC Penney's old parking lot over to where Menards was. There's an entrance back there, go in the front. And if you go in the middle, it's to the left. If you go in the entrance by Jimmy John's, it's to the right. There we go, yeah. that was easy. Perfect. Um, so landmarks, yeah. baby, landmarks. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So yeah, we'll be back at Hole 17. We mm -hmm. had so much fun last year that we were like, we have to be a part of this again. It was mm -hmm. a blast. Um, so the benefits with stick mobility, uh, we also do uh, free classes at Geneva on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So we're already out there and helping golfers and anyone within the community. Uh, but the stick mobility was so much fun, getting people in there just to get a couple little warm-up practices in. And before they went out, I think we had plenty of carts just kind of hanging at our spot. Um, you can always tell when you go to events like that one, and, and I've seen it there, you can always tell which ones are the cool holes or the cool like <laughs> vendor like info booths because there's just like carts everywhere <laughs> around it. And like you can't figure out where to park. And We don't yeah. intentionally create the backup. Yeah. It's just sort of a, by, a byproduct of that. But I mean, that, that's the one thing I, that, I try to impress upon all anybody who will listen, especially as a golfer. Um, I mean, how often when you're going to go play, you'll go trunk to tee. You're just going to pull the the golf bag out of the trunk, trunk to tee. That's like a whole phrase. That is, that's and a, and throw on the shoes. That, you know, you hit a couple putts. So go play. out to the driving range and you driving know, range. Man, forget that. Uh, you didn't even bother pull out that driver real quick. Just start. You know, try to hit those 300 yard drives. And you know, I can talk about. I mean, will you even warm up before you shovel snow, or before you mow the lawn, before you pull weeds? or mulch eh, mulch season we missed by a couple months but i mean all of those things are still athletic movements and so we uh, i don't know we think we're we're sort of better than what we are and then we complain about it afterwards it's like man i am so sore well remember no kidding that huge tally we did a tally last year we asked mm -hmm. every single one of them did you do some sort of warm-up some of them actually did. A couple of them just said they went out to the driving range. Mm -hmm. And then I think majority of them said, nope. No. But I mean, yeah, it's an athletic movement. It's a very violent movement, um, especially through the, 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 the mid and lower back. And mm -hmm. if you're walking, I mean, I very rarely will take a golf cart, so I walk. But the fact that we need to prep our bodies, whether, oh, yeah. it's, whether it's our hips, whether, um, I mean, ankles all the way up the chain from the ground. If I were to give you 10 exercises or five exercises that you could do in five minutes, would you do it? And there's a lot of people that, and I'd love to have our uh, census that we took. Um, out of however many people there were, were there last year, I'd say what, 130, 140 golfers maybe 10 would do something in terms of an actual specific 
an intentional warm up. Mm -hmm. um, See, I always thought that's what the front nine was. Front nine's the warm up, back nine's the only one that counts. Well, see, and so here's the thing. So if we can warm up to where that back nine counting is now your front nine, then think about how good the back nine then could be. Yeah, but then you're not in great, you're worn out by the time you get to the 19th. Well, hole. then see, that's where the performance portion of it comes in. <laughs> did you just say to that where 19? you get better, better because strength, you, better you cannot, endurance. You cannot I, those, wear those 16 this out ounce before, curls. I know. Exactly. I know. And see, so, yeah, you need to alternate. I get it. It's all about expectations and, and what your goals are. You know, and of course, we're talking about water. And, and so with. Uh, with our particular beverage container, yeah, you need to go left and right. It's true, very true. Left yes. and right balance. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, we we try to show, you know, if you can put in four or five minutes yeah. just before you even uh, think about swinging a golf club. You can use a golf club. You can use the cart. You don't have to take our stick mobility product mm -hmm. out there. You, there are things you can be able to do to modify mm -hmm. it just to be able to get your body ready. Um, you know, we, we joke about it a little bit, but um, the fact of prepping your body before you play and what's even more critical, after. after. And so that's why, that's the great segue into Saturday is that we want to fill our workout time with as much as we can. But we will, what do we do? We hop in a car and we'll go home, maybe sit on the couch, maybe do something else. And with this workout, you get a good 30 to 35 minute workout. And then we're gonna be spending another 25 minutes up to 10 o'clock. Then basically just trying to recover from mm -hmm. what we just did. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a workout to where your muscles are screaming that you can't get out of bed the next day. No, that's, that's what, that is not what we do. Right. It's an active recovery function. It's active recovery. And that's, that's one yes. thing that's, you know, uh, and, you know, I play racquetball, which can be fairly violent as well. Yes. And, you know, y you do have to, like, you have to get your body ready. And, and more importantly, mm -hmm. afterwards, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything will just stick where it was and you're screwed. Oh, so. no, like <laughs> yes. Thursday is going to be a hot day. Yes. So stay plenty hydrated. That means even including water with your hydration. Start Wednesday night yeah. with so, the hydration. So what did you bring So oh. um, <laughs> I love to do little um, giveaways. So this is what we're gonna be giving away at Hole 17. So we're gonna have a raffle. So the first thing we're doing is we're giving away our summer ebook. If you sign up for our summer ebook, this is gonna have healthy summer tips, tricks, activities. It's gonna talk about plate method, travel tips, alcohol resources, daily hydration, and just some of our favorite summer recipes. So that's where to get the alcohol? Is that what? What's yeah, in that? Okay. basically where to get the alcohol, yes. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, so if they sign up for this, they will get entered in for our raffle prize. So we give away um, protein products. We actually partner with uh, Healthy Steps Nutrition, so that's where our nutrition program comes from. Um, the registered dietitian actually made a cookbook. It's not just a kid's cookbook. There's recipes in there for everyone. Um, shaker bottles, uh, fit aids. So, and of course, you know, I have to do a koozie. Of course. You have to. Um, we'll also have an in-body scan in here and a 12-pass punch card. That's one of those alcohol resources, right? Yeah. Yes. Got it. So this is uh, our gift basket that we always do. Uh, it's just super fun and easy. Um, it's basically just a nice little kickstart for your, a healthy lifestyle. So we'll have that available. We'll have information about stick mobility at Geneva. Um, that's completely free. You don't even have to be a member at Geneva to attend those. So they're Wednesdays at noon and then um, Saturdays at 1030 in the morning. So we'll have that information. Of course, we'll still be fundraising for the walk. So that's always a nice thing that um, we're able to add that to our table just for recognition. So, yeah. And we're going to kick in something for the silent auction as well. So you have a couple ways to awesome. uh, not only have a basket uh, similar, but maybe a little bit different than this to be able to bid on. Um, you'll be able to have this uh, just to be able to uh, signing up for our ebook and have uh, to be another potential winner. Awesome. And the ebook's super easy. It makes awesome. my life easier too. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. You guys always have so much stuff going on, and it's um, it's fun to watch, right? Like you guys are super active on social media, obviously, 
and it, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we'll talk about the life. Yeah. So I'm we so do sad. need to make sure we, we, we get yes, people to I, the right, to the new Instagram site. Yeah. Um, I have very strong opinions about someone on the other side of the world that had nothing really better to do than to hack oh. and steal our account. I've had that happen before. It's not fun. Oh, <laughs> it's, I wanted to go full Liam Neeson on this, dude. Yeah. And no, it's a it's, pain. You take a step yeah, back and you go, and, and so where we go, we go, you know what? Let's, we're just going to make this you know, bigger, just, faster, stronger. Yep. So. And that's all you can do. Yeah. yeah. That's literally all you can do. Yeah. Yep. So we're at impact.muscatine on Instagram yeah, now. Yeah. Very similar. We're just adding the dot in between <laughs> yeah. impact and, and muscatine. So uh, <laughs> Moving on if you followed us before, make sure you follow yeah. us again. But anyway, going into uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, and, and we you, officially we, talk too long. No, uh, yes. you, well, you talk. You talk about you know we have a lot of things going on. Um, I'm not going to take the thunder away from Autumn's 28 uh, day nutrition challenge upcoming. Um, we had a lot of great results from a six week challenge that we did earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. Some amazing people doing amazing things, and so now we're going to do uh, sort of an end of summer before school kind of like a back to type school type of vibe for 28 days but i'm not going to take her thunder on this it's so, all yours. uh yeah so we're hosting our 28 day nutrition challenge it will kick off on july 23rd um this is basically going to be an opportunity to just get back into healthy season especially for the fall a lot of nurses teachers um, even parents just trying to get back into a normal routine we'll be focusing on the four core um, elements of uh, fitness, we'll have mental health, a lot of that is stress management, um, sleep, and then nutrition will be the four elements that they'll be working on. Um, you get over 100 healthy recipes, you get meal plan um, ideas, um, we'll have many challenges, and these are going to also have prizes from local businesses, uh, group accountability, and we do this all through your app, um, all of your habit tracking, all videos, check-ins, they're weekly, and then we'll have also four um, basically in-person presentations to talk about more of a holistic health. Gotcha. So this will be my uh, third annual, fourth. And our six week challenge, we had 30 uh, people in it. The goal is to get 50 people to join in this one. Just think, 20 years from now, you and I can do this again and we can have the conversation like I had with Taco about how amazing the 25 years have been and you just got a little ways to go. You know. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little. little. Just a little. Um, so a lot of this is about support and accountability. You get nutrition coaching. You also get access for the 28 days at the gym for mm -hmm. all of the classes as well. So you get expert coaches. Um, my registered dietitians that we work with through HSN, just building that confidence and creating those goals for you. Holy cow. So all of this is on our website. If you go into impactmuscatine.fit, go under blog. The workout to end information is in there, and so is the 28 day nutrition challenge. Awesome. Easy breezy. And we'll make sure that we've got it on Discover Muscatine and can get it all out there. Oh, yeah. It It'll, on, it's easy to find. It is on the events page. Yes. So, that, the workout, and this 28 day nutrition challenge, they are both on there. So, oh, easy to heavens. find. Yeah, look at that. I try. You know. I try. It's good. Holy cow. So, workout to end this Saturday. This Saturday. You'll be at the golf. Uh, event on Thursday, mm -hmm. 28 day health or uh, fitness or uh, we'll just call it health day. challenge. Health challenge, yeah. Yeah. nutrition. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, when in doubt, just check out their website, social media, impact dot muscatine mm -hmm. on Instagram, um, and you'll find tons of stuff. Yeah. And just check them out. And, and as far as Saturday goes, it's an absolute free workout. We'll just, you know, we'll we'll take donations, whatever you're willing to uh, to donate um, for the cause, and we're just have, gonna have a good time. Sounds good. Well, thank you too for stopping in. Thank you. Fun as always. And uh, again, if you only could hear the conversations, like I don't know her and Taco hanging out, <laughs> it's it's always just an adventure. Someday we'll we'll get a BTS camera up for you, but. <laughs> Thank you too for stopping in, you Muscatine. Might. We will see you tonight.